read about the, the story of this crime and everything about it seemed quite unusual, not least the fact that it was perpetrated by a group of fairly seemingly well-educated young men from pretty good backgrounds. And so I initially thought it sounded like a good yarn and, and the more I read about it, the more it seemed like, like all capers, you know, it was well planned, but it didn't quite go according to that plan. And I thought that that on paper felt like an interesting starting point. That combined with how unusual the criminals were, I was sort of interested to understand more about the motivations for it. At that point in time, the four protagonists were all serving quite lengthy prison sentences. And so we began a, a written correspondence. I, th I think they were incredibly honest because I felt, I think, you know, they had the time to reflect on what they'd done and, and they talked about, you know, each of the four guys had very different motivations for what, for why they had got involved in this. And it was those motivations which, to me, felt like a way into a more interesting story which was really about uh, this generation of relatively privileged young men who had grown up with an expectation that they were going, their lives were going to be special in some way. And that that was a right for them, that they were going to evolve into, you know, interesting, celebrated people. And I think as you get older, it starts to dawn on you that that might, be the, might not be the case. And so I guess that was the thing that for me, it felt like it was a great, you always look for a great yarn, but the thing that is sort of equally or more important is that it speaks to something about how we live and it certainly seemed that it was about this generation who were a little bit lost and looking for a way in which to be special or to be interesting and so that was that was really the starting point. I was looking for just simply the best actors I mean really and and I think because the film has an unusual form and it would be and, and the real guys are, are present in the film. I think we all understand what the game is. You know, when you, when you watch a uh, film based on a true story, you know, we all enter into that contract and we know what the game is. And to me, the idea of casting lookalikes felt very, I mean, you'd be limiting the scope of who you could cast immediately. And also, I, I think I was looking for something of the essence of the real guys, but it was important that these guys were able to find their version of that character, that they weren't actually really worrying about reflecting the personalities of those real characters, that, that they found it themselves. I love the idea of them actually being in the film and you getting to see that because it sort of, it just grounds everything and makes it that much more real and it's coming from their mouths. This is actually what happens. You're telling their story, you know, so you have to have a bit of respect and yeah, it was weird meeting Spencer. You know, we didn't spend too much time with him. I mean, he was there for a day or so and that was it. When you meet the real guys, you know, this is 10 years later and most of that 10 years has been spent behind bars. So, you know, they, they're different people. And in a way you don't want, you know, I didn't want these guys feeling like they were obliged to represent that version of the character who's older and wiser, you know, that really they should be free to find their own character based on what's in the script, so. What was cool was Eric had sent me a playlist of music he was listening to at the time, oh, during awesome. the, that time, yeah. so a lot of what he was listening to then is stuff that I listen to now. It was like Johnny Cash and Wu-Tang Clan. It was like a <coughs> bunch of like different styles of music that I'm into too, so I was like, okay, we have a connection then. How did you guys like bond? You're supposed to be playing very close friends and you need to have that on screen. What was it like when you first met? Bart arranged for us to uh, uh, live together for like a week and go through rehearsals and get to know each other. And we would just like spend nights like watching cops and ordering <laughs> <laughs> yeah. spoons. Uh, I would build a fire for them every night outside, <laughs> keep them warm, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Chop yeah, some yeah. wood, make a fire, sit around the fire, drink some wine, do some boxing. Yeah. It was good. Listen to music. Yeah. yeah, we turned that nice neighborhood into the hood for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.